morning to my soccer universe. Just came up with it. Uh, let's talk European leagues yesterday, which in a way is La Liga mostly. Uh, today I didn't make notes, but I think I will remember most of the important stuff. It's mostly La Liga. I will throw in a little bit Liga, and of course there was a big game in England too. Um, and yes, there were three Coppa Italia results where I think the Fiorentina 2 0 at Torino, ben Inter Benevento 6 2, and Napoli also, I don't even know against whom, managed to go on. And let's keep it at that. I uh, gotta give it to the Coppa Italia that, due to the seeding system, at least you get some interesting pairings that probably force the bigger teams into playing uh, fuller sports. But anyway, uh, it's also a little bit against the spirit of the cup competition. But maybe it's a way out. Anyway, let's uh, go further um, with the other leagues. Um, yesterday I managed to watch, I want to say, almost two games. Um, I felt kind of sicklish in the, in the evening and I wanted to watch NFL, but I had to go to bed and uh, had a good night. So I'm feeling much, 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 much better. And the other thing is, of course, you heard all those, you probably heard in the news, how bad the weather is in Austria, and you know, the Alps are drowning in snow, blah, blah, here with us. Um, it was bad last week, uh, bad in, in the sense that I could, I, on the weekend I couldn't go, go, go with the car, but now, yes, we get snow, but soon thereafter is usually rain, uh, which helps a lot. And then, Everything's all right, but in the mountains, just an hour from here, it is pandemonium. Yeah, that's true. Okay, having that. Um, so the first game that I watched, I was actually thinking, sh um, shall I go watch Atlet uh, um, Sevilla against Bilbao or something like that? But then I saw an interesting matchup in France between uh, Nantes and Rennes. Now, it's not the glamour matchup, but in a way for me it is because I still have very fond mem memories of a trip that I did almost 20 years ago to northwestern France and of course Rennes and Nantes are the biggest teams there. I always had a liking for Nantes and yes, I was at the stadium in Rennes, um, which yeah, they play in red, 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 black, more to like there and Nantes, of course, in the wonderful yellow, green, canary jerseys. Uh, the game itself was actually quite interesting also because uh, I think from what I heard is that Nantes has not won against the Rennes in 14 years or something like that and uh, it is a local rivalry. I don't know the extent of it but since the towns are relatively close and always fighting a little bit for probably always fighting supremacy in northwestern France. Uh, northwestern France is actually not there are actually quite some teams in there. I'm surprised about that uh, since population-wise it's not as dense, but yeah, there's also something about it. Back to the game. Uh, it actually started out, I think it was in the around the 10th minute when there was a free kick uh, from the right attacking side into the box and Nantes got the lead seemingly through a header. Uh, but quickly it was uh, look at it on far, look at it on far. That's exactly what happened. It was not a header, it was a pretty clear handball pushing the um, ball into the net. And hence the goal was cancelled. And the commentator at that point said, uh, you know, Nantes is very um, easily hit by standards, and now they uh, are dead ball situation, and now. They themselves made a goal. Maybe this uh, reverses history. No, it did not, because not only was the goal disallowed, and the stadium, which was pleasantly full, I have to say, after seeing all those Asian Cup highlights with uh, more or less empty stadiums, uh, seeing that even a average league game in France can draw a full house. Yes, it's a uh, local rivalry, but still, it's very refreshing to see. But yeah, then uh, just five minutes later, free kick uh, for Rennes and they take the lead through a header. And exactly as it says, it's dead ball situations. Well, so uh, Nantes from that moment on, of 
course tried to get the equalizer um, there was unfortunately a little break in the coverage but uh, I saw mostly not going for Ren being very um, dangerous on the counter-attack but it was not that had the greatest uh, the bigger chances and from what I could see uh, not had a huge chance with a free header flying header uh, hitting from a short range to post I mean if you hit this just a little bit further then you get the equalizer it was not to be Ren keeps winning against not and yeah, uh, it was a mid-table clash, which makes me happy in two ways because I want both teams to do well in Liga. They are off the pace for any European competition. It's still uh, Lille Lyon for um, uh, the Champions League spots, and I think Marseille, Saint Etienne, uh, those kind of teams. Montpellier are uh, going for. Europa League spots, uh, Marseille only managing a 1-1 draw at home to Monaco, uh, maybe says Fabregas, I didn't see anything, did something there, but maybe Monaco is getting out of trouble, but yeah, it's it's a daunting task. Okay, that was basically the League Air action. Um, the other game that I watched, I watched a little bit of, uh, very little bit of uh, Bilbao Sevilla but more on that a little bit later when I talk about La Liga and then I, it was all for me Tottenham against Manchester United this was to me kind of the big name matchup of the day although Bilbao Sevilla if Bilbao wouldn't be a relegation candidate I honestly would have probably picked that one over Tottenham Manchester United but I just went by stats more or less and yes, I was curious what Manchester United is going to do. I saw the game until the 70th minute and I saw the, I saw enough highlights, I guess, to get a real good feel for it. It started out a little bit, you know, feeling each other. Um, it was very interesting because both uh, teams have very similar jersey designs, but from different manufacturers, both have this gradient going to the bottom. Uh, for Manchester United it would go red into black, but if they were playing in white shorts for Tottenham, it goes white into the navy. Uh, I think the way they played yesterday, it looked best. It really looked great with Manchester United in the white shorts, and even if they're red and they go fading to the black, it doesn't look that bad. I think it's a pretty good look for Manchester United. Yeah, they were feeling each other, then I think Tottenham had one uh, pretty good chance that was uh, put wide. I would have wished that Kane or Son would have taken him but Son made the wonderful pass his last game before going off to the Asian Cup and yeah then it was actually United who got a little bit more dangerous and uh, the telling stat at halftime was that Tottenham didn't get a shot on goal the only shot on goal was an offside goal by Kane but at that point uh, United although not having the majority of the game was kind of dangerous always uh, on the counter long balls where then there was usually a uh, attacker wide giving Tottenham some trouble but just around the 30th I thought Tottenham is getting control of the game and yeah there was a goal by Kane which was marginally offside so right call although I still have not seen any conclusive replays because to me it looked it was an own goal but I guess still Kane being offside um, would have caused too much uh, disturbance so that it would count as a proper on goal. Yeah, so uh, it looked to me with Tottenham, you know, I don't want to say wasting chances, but um, a little bit wasting opportunities and not having the punch to go all the way through the United defense. Uh, it looked like a nil nil at halftime, and then Pogba played a wonderful pass. Uh, standing almost uh, from behind the halfway line deep to the right um, into Rashford who equally took the shot well and Yoris got his fingers on it but it was 1-0 United in the 44th but at times times Sissoko for Tottenham uh, got a knee, um, pulled his hamstring I guess uh, had to be replaced and yeah 1-0 at half time and I think United in a way deserved they were the more dangerous team I felt um, 
not necessarily the better, but uh, they were hanging in there and were more dangerous. Second half started with Tottenham who really wanted to get the equalizer and there were chances uh, that the hair uh, saved well or was well defended and then Pogba actually had two great chances to make it 2-0. Uh, uh, at which point I thought, hmm, yeah, this one. A, I was feeling pretty miserable already and I really thought, yeah, United is probably gonna take this home. I actually liked when Pogba had the second chance where he just uh, tipped the ball with his foot and uh, Yoris got uh, saved it just over the bar without his touch. This would have gotten in a very nicely timed half volley or, vo or, or volley, I don't know. Um, and Pogba and Yoris kind of had this handshake. You did well, you know, France teammates, lead leaders of the French team. Uh, acknowledging it, uh, those performances. It, it, this was my scene of the game. Uh, Pogba, of course, being really well ever since uh, Mourinho is out of the picture. Just saying. And then it was a clinic by the hair, who really saved two or three times with world class saves. I think it's the first time that I personally have seen the hair on the top of his game. And yep, yeah, Manchester United wins. Tottenham is, now, is level now with Arsenal. Arsenal by two goals better in the goal difference. And yeah, Liverpool is clear nine points of uh, Tottenham. So that goes well for them. And you just have to worry about City who plays tonight uh, at Wolves. So yeah, not more. Uh, if, they, if they win, then it's four points. Otherwise it remains seven points. Okay, and that leads us to La Liga, where Atletico Madrid got a pretty scrappy win against Levante. I think they were largely the better team, but they needed a penalty uh, for Atleti that uh, Griezmann uh, took. Makes it 1-0 for Atletico Madrid. Kind of putting a little bit of pressure on Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona didn't succumb to any pressure, winning easily 3-0 against Eibar. That's the only game I haven't seen highlights, I haven't seen the goals, but I saw that Suarez uh, uh, with, with a brace and Messi. <laughs> Typically fair, I would say. And yeah, so Barcelona has a five-point lead on Atleti and Atleti only because Atletic Bilbao against Sevilla was the Iñaki Williams show with two greatly taken goals. I don't see Iñaki Williams staying long with Atletic Bilbao, to be honest. Um, both goals really well taken. Sevilla just having won against uh, Bilbao 3-1 in the cup. Now they're losing 2-0 and are dropping off a little bit now. They are only 33 points uh, in third place at the moment. And yeah, Bilbao getting vital points uh, in, to avoid relegation. Uh, hopefully they will because Bilbao is just a team that belongs to La Liga. Um, Great win for them, absolutely. Uh, it was actually visually a little bit of a weird match of uh, white with red, uh, red Sox for Sevilla and the red and white of Bilbao then with black pants. A little bit too monochrome, monochrome in a way, but yeah, both teams playing in the traditional uh, kit, so I'm fine with that. So therefore, Sevilla is now 10 points behind Barcelona. That's already a long way to go. So I think Barcelona looks like the old new champion. They uh, will repeat unless they have a um, doubtful of epic proportions. Um, and that left then, is Real Madrid gonna come into fourth place with a win at Betis or is Alaves holding on to that? I saw the highlights and I really re regretted that I was not in the best shape because this seem to be a really interesting game. Uh, Real Madrid starting out well and taking the lead through deflected shot by Modric who later on had another uh, wide shot but the interesting thing if you look at the stats of the game uh, it was that Spetis Sevilla had 72% of the ball. Everything else was rather even and maybe even more shots for Real Madrid but 70%, 72% of the ball was with Betis Sevilla. Um, so Vinicius, the 
only one that played well for Real Madrid in the last few weeks uh, had another good chance and gets things a little bit going uh, and Real had a few really good counter-attacks uh, that unfortunately didn't amount to anything unfortunately for Betis. Uh, Betis just had a free kick I think that uh, went wide in the first half but then the second half Betis really came on. Uh, Guardado with a nice volley almost uh, made the equalizer already and then uh, Lo Celso got the equalizer and it was look at the VAR. It was I would say by a hair of sight but to the point where you could say it was uh, the same height. But tough call. Really really tough call to me. Uh, but yeah it got the equalizer and it seemed all that is going for Betis and then I think David Ceballos comes on, uh, gets whistled because he is of course from the Betis um, youth department and <laughs> what does he do? He scores a free kick goal and you don't have Ronaldo anymore, you, uh, Bale is out, Benzema actually uh, broke his finger so he's out as well. It needs to be the youth department needs to step up in a way and he the free kick was really well taken in the long corner I think it was 84th minute somewhere there um, giving Real the lead and the win and yeah he kind of apologized a little bit to, 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 to the crowd because he and they, they were livid at him but yeah Real Madrid back to winning ways first points first win in the league this year now even on points with Sevilla fourth place again 10 points off uh, Barcelona and then I think it is Alaves and Getafe who have the next points we have an interesting game with um, Espanyol against uh, Real Sociedad this evening which basically both can get into the Europa League race a little bit with a win with with a draw I'm not sure how how well it will go for them so that's my take on yesterday's action let me know which games you watched, whether you agree with my assessment of all these games. I think it was really more La Liga day, although I spent probably more time now talking Tottenham United. But uh, the La Liga games were all kind of interesting, I uh, gotta say. And I, again, I regret that I was not feeling too well because it must have been a really nice day to watch probably all La Liga action. But yeah, I'm better now and all can go upwards. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon, bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.